America strong. In the 20th century, William Shatner took us off on a voyage into the universe to experience what life is like on other planets. But now, here in the 21st century, he has come back to explore what life is like right here on our own planet. Now, this is all part of a new series that we call Keeping America Strong. As you know, part of Keeping America Strong lies in providing a very important industry with the latest technologies. Technologies that make it possible to operate at the highest efficiency and the lowest cost. Without this industry, there would be no flexible food and medical packaging, no package sheeting, agricultural film, can liners, no trash bags, no department store shopping bags. My goodness, it's a very important industry, obviously, that impacts everyday life. So how can we help to move it forward? Well, one of the answers lies with our guest today, who has developed a multi-process device that technically is helping to revolutionize the manufacturing process. And we're about to find out just what it all is. He happens to be the president of a very interesting company that is headquartered in Grand Prairie, Texas. That's near Dallas, right outside of Dallas. His name is D.R. Joseph, and his company is D.R. Joseph, Inc. Mr. Joseph, welcome. Nice to have you here. Thank you Daniel very much. Daniel Joseph. Dan, welcome. Thank you, Doug. Tell me a little bit. I mean, this is a very interesting introduction to you, and I have no more idea of what you do than flying to the moon. So tell me a little bit about what this is. What industry are we talking about? Well, we're talking about the blown film extrusion industry. And like you said in the, in the intro, is that there's a, a, a large variety of film products that are made throughout the world for different applications. Uh, the more critical ones being in the medical and the food uh, industry, in particular food preservation, uh, also some mundane areas like trash bags, merchandise bags, things like and that. And look, we've got this right here. This is this is the kind of thing we're talking about, right? Yes. I think everybody right. who goes shopping, and we're not advertising this brand, but the packaging. This is lettuce that uh, is pre-washed. You'll find this in your in your uh, in your grocery market. You just take this home, open it up, and eat it. It keeps the uh, the 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 lettuce inside fresh for a period of a couple of weeks. Couple of weeks. Um, I mean, this one has an expiration date of at least two weeks from now, so that's a pretty good shelf life. But the packaging is interesting, and most people would have no idea. Tell me what's happening in this bag right now. Well, this particular package right now is actually breathing um, oxygen away and allowing carbon dioxide in and keeping moisture in all this to uh, allow the uh, the product to stay fresh for a long period of time. That's a fascinating thing. You would never know it by looking at the bag, but, you know, gases are coming in and going out, yep. and yet it keeps moisture inside. Yes, yes, exactly. So, you are involved in the in the manufacturing process of film like this. Here we have something else. Everybody recognizes this. These are trash, trash bag liners. Yep. Typical thing. Same kind of process. Same process. This one's not nearly as sophisticated as, this, as the lettuce bag, but right. it's the same process, yes. All right. So tell me what you do. Well, our equipment uh, in the blown film extrusion machinery is a very large machine, and uh, our aspect of it is the inter what we call the internal bubble cooling. And what that does is that provides uh, the ability to size the product pr precisely and also to um, give the customer uh, sig significant improvements in production rate through added cooling. Well, it, it occurs to me that to get some appreciation of what you're talking about, you almost have to have some understanding of how these kind of items are made and manufactured. That's right. uh, and I am sure the average person doesn't have a clue. I, I know I didn't. Uh, but we have a, a laptop here with a picture on it. So let's pull this up and see if the picture is still there. Yes, it is. And if we can focus on it. This is the machine you're talking about. Take, try, explain this to me so I get some idea of what's happening Okay. Here. Well, let me give you a background of the, pro of the process. Um, point out, this is a very tall machine. We're very tall at. machine. This machine, this is only about 20 foot of it, yeah. and uh, generally they're about 40 foot, about 40 foot tall. 40 feet tall. Okay. Yes. Um, what we have is uh, down here we have the extrusion die. This accepts... Uh, hot molten poly from the uh, extruders. They're not shown here. There can be between one to nine extruders. This bag we were talking about here typically will be a five uh, extruder type bag, whereas this product here would be a one extruder type bag. And that's how many different layers of material are actually in this uh, what we call the blown film bubble. All right. That's now, right it's here. interesting because that blue image we're looking at, that's really this plastic sheeting. Yes. That's it's being actually. blown it's it's it's, it's being made as, it's as you're looking at it. Literally in space in open air. Like a balloon almost. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yes, exactly. So and there's uh, 
and when we make this, this is very hot in here. This is between 400 and 500 degrees Fahrenheit. We have two cooling paths, one on the outside. This is the air ring. The internal, air, internal cooling, which is what our product handles, is the cool air is delivered in through this bottom section. It rises and is vacuumed back out. In our motive devices, we have a blower for blowing the cold air in, a control system, a uh, control valve, which our system manages, and then also the hot air path for the blower going and the blower going out. I was just going to ask, what is the reason for blowing hot air? I mean, cold air in there. We want to get it cold and it cold and frozen in a state of size that we have here that we want as soon as possible, and that is what controls your production rate because. If it's still warm, when they take it up to that final 40 feet and close it together, it'll stick together and won't, it won't be usable at that point. So we have to get as much cooling on both sides of the film as possible. Now, the other interesting aspect of your story is, let's go back to this machine again, the picture of this, is that you don't make the machine itself. Nope. You make a small element that goes inside this process. Yes, we make the control system. Here's the main control panel here. We have our ultrasonic sensors, which are used to measure the position of the film and give us feedback as to what size it is. We have another set of ultrasonic sensors up here right. that give us the diameter. And we automatically manage the uh, sizing cage. I can't move it here, but in any case, um, the operator essentially types in the size that he wants, and we manage all the aspects of getting that size accomplished. And then we give him the ability to put in as much cooling as, as that film can take without losing its stability. And there's another picture. What, you know, what do we see in this, this next picture? That this one here is an actual blown film bubble showing two ultrasonic sensors measuring the, uh, s the position of the bubble. This is the bottom of the sizing cage, which is how the control system constrains the film to a certain size. Um, and then the parts that you can't see, of course, are the airflow delivery on the inside because this particular film is white. The other interesting part of this is that you can actually see this isn't completely round. The film, the, the picture is caught the bubble moving in shape and size. Yeah. This is one of the parts of the technology that we handle and that's what we call bubble flutter. So it's, uh, it looks like it holds itself in, in nice stasis form but it's very fluttery and some products are extremely fluttery. And so we have ultrasonic technology that uh, filters that flutter out and provides us with a steady signal. Well, you know, this is really a fascinating story because you make such a, a, a key component but it's just a little tiny, tiny niche element of this whole process That's of correct. manufacturing these, these plastic bags and, uh, and containers. Uh, it, it, one wonders how you, how you actually managed to start a business doing this. Why wouldn't the original manufacturer make this kind of, kind of equipment himself? Well, some of them do, but it is a very, very difficult process to master. It's, uh, quite, uh, it's quite easy to... Uh, put together a conservative system that handles a few products, but our particular system has got the widest range of uh, applications in the world. And so it's, uh, it's hard to do, much harder than it looks. So tell me a little bit about what you actually do to make it. How complex is it? And I know it's not just the physical stuff. You make software that goes along with it. There's a, there's a lot involved here. There's a lot, of, see. There's a lot involved. Uh, the software is the, uh, is the key element in terms of the technology, in terms of the filtering technologies and how we process the movements and things. But there's a lot of engineering that went into uh, selection of ultrasonic sensors to give us the best uh, signal strength in a, in a high noise environment, which this is actually not a good application for ultrasonics, but the patent technologies make that uh, work well. Uh, we also do a lot of engineering on the airflow of the system. Um, and, and then um, all the components are all extra heavy duty. Uh, for long life, we look to give the customer a minimum of 10 years uh, with this system without any upgrades, but we also produce a lot of upgrade paths that are uh, allow them to take advantage of the new technologies that we come out with. The key, of course, is the sensors, another key. Now, you have a sensor right there. Why don't you hand this to me? Let me, uh, let me hold it up to the camera to see and explain to me really what this, this is, a very complex piece of equipment? It's a very so? complex piece of equipment. Inside, in fact, there is a, a very powerful computer inside. Yeah. There's also uh, this little white spot here is what we call the transducer. It emits the ultrasonic pulse at a very high frequency, uh, uh, very high frequency, so that there's not ambient noises in the factory, which are full of ambient noises that will interfere with the sound. Um, and what's it measuring? This is really a measuring device. It's a it? measuring device. It's measuring the distance between a target. So if I put my hand up here, it would read back how far that is between my hand and the face of that sensor. In this case, we're measuring the position of the film. 
It's measuring the position of the film? Is it measuring the thickness of the film? No, no? it does not measure the thickness. It does measure the ambient temperature around it because, as you know, um, the speed of sound is uh, dependent on temperature. Right. So it needs to know what the temperature is in its environment. So that's inside the sensor is temperature compensation. And you have these sensors at various points throughout the process. Yes. You're measuring, so you're measuring the temperature as it moves along, the, well, as, yeah, the, as the plastic moves along. Yes. It, it's interesting. This is the blown film industry. Yes. I didn't even know there was such an industry. Is it very big? It's very large. Um, every industrialized world, every industrialized country, yeah. um, has these machines. They have to because that's how you preserve food. And that's the, probably the number one reason these these machines get into an area is to preserve food, food packaging. Then comes medical packaging, then agricultural purposes, then of course refuse, trash bags, um, and those sort of things. The Keeping America Strong Award.